today's lesson is on Alexander the Great, and I got this story from a chapter from the book, The Story of the World History for the Classical Child, and it's by Susan ba uh, Weisbauer, who writes a lot about the ancient world, um, and I really like her writing. So um, what I love about this is it's kind of a story, but it's also true information. So um, you put those two things together, and um, and it makes for a more enjoyable read, I think. So let's talk about Alexander the Great. We already know that because of the mountainous geography of Greece, early Greek civilizations were broken into city-states. Each city-state acted like its own country with its own king and or eventually its own form of democracy. Since the people of Greece were vying for good land and resources, the city-states for the most part didn't get along with one another and they didn't trade with one another for the most part. Uh, but they did trade with other civilizations instead of with each other. Between 492 and 490 BCE, the Greek city-states came together to fight off the Persian empire from conquering all of Greece. And they were successful. You'd think this would help the Greek city-states get along, but in the end, they just continued fighting. Athens and Sparta were the worst of enemies. After almost 30 years of fighting back and forth with one another, they grew weak, and we know the plague was in there as well. Unfortunately for them, a king from the north named Philip of Macedonia realized how easy it would be for someone to conquer Greece once and for all. This is where we pick up our reading. So here starts the story from the story of the world. Philip and Alexander. Philip noticed that Athens and Sparta had become weaker and weaker after years of battle. And so he came down to Greece with his army and he conquered all the city-states one at a time because they weren't united in any way and it wasn't too hard for him. From what we see, they barely had enough energy to resist. Now Philip ruled Macedonia and Greece, but he wanted even more. He wanted to sail across the Aegean Sea to Asia Minor take over the Persian Empire as well. But before he could attack Persia, Philip died and his son Alexander took his throne. Alexander had always been an unusual boy. When he was still a small boy, he went with his father to look at a war horse that Philip wanted to buy. The horse had a huge black was a huge black stallion named Bucephalus and he bucked constantly. No one could ride him. He's too wild, King Philip said, I don't want him. I'd never be able to manage him. I can ride him, Alexander said. Nonsense, Philip said, you're too little. But I know I can, Alexander insisted. If you can ride him, I'll buy him for you, Philip promised. Alexander had been watching Bucephalus carefully. He noticed the horse kicked and reared whenever the sun threw the sh his shadow on the ground in front of him. Alexander thought the huge stallion was frightened of his shadow. So he walked fearlessly up to the horse, took his bridle, and turned him so he couldn't see a shadow. Instantly, Bucephalus stood still. He allowed Alexander to mount and ride him. Philip bought the horse for Alexander. When Alexander became king after his father's death, he, uh, the great black stallion Bucephalus always carried him into battle. He even named a city after his horse. He called it Bucephala. When Bucephalus dies, this is just my inputting here, he was buried in a great tomb in the center of the city of Bucephala. Alexander had many opportunities to ride his war horse into battle. His father, Philip, conquered Greece. But Alexander had even larger goals in mind. He wanted to rule Persia. The Persians had given up trying to conquer Greece after that last loss, but their empire was still the largest in the world. It stretched from Asia Minor all the way to India. Alexander wanted it. When Alexander took on the Persian army in Asia Minor, he sent his cavalry, those are the soldiers riding on horseback, to push the Persians back. Asia Minor was now his. Could he really conquer the rest of the Persian empire? He thought it was worth a try. According to one story, Alexander stopped at a city in Asia Minor and there in the city center was a chariot. Tied to its axle was a huge complicated rope knot larger than a man's head. What's that, he asked. That's the Gordian knot, the people told him. We have a legend about it. The man who loosens the knot will rule all the rest of Asia. But it's impossible to, to untie the knot. Hundreds of men have tried and no one has ever succeeded. 
Alexander studied the knot carefully. Then he took out his sword and sliced the knot down the middle. <laughs> Shortcut. There, he said, I loosened the knot. <laughs> no one had ever thought of doing that before. But the prophecy of the knot did come true. Alexander conquered all the rest of Asia Minor. He went south into Egypt and was crowned Pharaoh of Egypt. He came back up into Mesopotamia and took over the rest of the Persian Empire. Now Alexander was the king of more land than anyone else had ever ruled. He was truly Alexander the Great, the ruler of the largest empire the world had ever seen, other than the Persian Empire. Um, answers. So we're gonna have kind of questions throughout. They're pretty obvious from the reading, but you can look them back up if you don't know. How was Philip able to conquer Greece when the Persian Empire was unable to do so? How could he do it when the Persians couldn't? Hmm. I think he was pretty patient. What was making Bucephalus so scared? It's like a, something we say to be silly now, scared of your own what, you know? And then how did Alexander loosen the Gordian knot? Go ahead and answer those. And we'll continue our story. Alexander's invasions. When Alexander the Great arrived at the edge of the Persian empire, he wanted to keep going. He wanted to conquer all of India. Alexander's armies began to invade India. Alexander learned how to use war elephants in combat, which the people of India already know how to do. And so his soldiers won most of their battles. But the Indians who fought against Alexander were fierce warriors too. Even though the soldiers from Macedonia won many battles, more and more of them died claiming victories. Finally, Alexander's army mutinied. After a particular, particularly difficult battle in which over a thousand soldiers were killed or badly wounded, the army refused to go one more step. Be content with what you have, they told Alexander. We don't wanna go on dying to make your empire bigger. Alexander didn't want to stop. He stayed in his tent sulking. He refused to see anyone, hoping his army would change its mind. But the men were firm. They would not fight in India any longer. Finally, Alexander agreed. He gave up trying to take over the rest of India and instead he put his energy into running the huge kingdom he already had. Alexander wanted the people of the future to remember that he'd been a great ruler, not just a conqueror, and that he was um, the ruler he was. And he knew that the cities that he built would last for years and years. So he built cities all over his empire and he named a lot of them after himself, Alexandria. Some of the cities still stand today. Just as Alexander intended, Alec, um, he was the greatest emperor of ancient times and he ruled over the largest empire the world had ever seen. The most famous city called Alexandria is in Egypt. Alexandria was built near the Nile River and the Mediterranean Sea, so merchants could easily reach it by ship. Alexander himself marked out the city's walls, but he died before he could see any of the buildings. After his death, Alexandria became the greatest city in the world. Many scholars and writers lived in Alexandria, and you've probably heard of a lot of them. It became a center for art, music, and learning, and math and science, Lord, you remember it for. Today, Alexandria is still a big, important city in Egypt. Just outside of Alexandria was the biggest lighthouse in the world. It was called Pharaoh's Lighthouse, and it was 330 feet tall. Ships could see it from miles away, so it was a good light for them to follow coming into harbor. They used the light to sail safely into the harbor of Alexandria. Have you ever heard of the seven wonders of the ancient world? They were amazing sites during ancient times. There was the hanging gardens of Babylon, the great pyramid at Giza, the statue of Zeus in Olympia, the Colossus of Rhodes, the mausoleum of Halicarnassus, the temple of Artemis in Greece, and of course, Pharaoh's lighthouse. No one had ever seen a lighthouse as large as this one. Pharaoh, Pharaoh's lighthouse was destroyed a long time ago. There are no pictures of the lighthouse, from ancient times, no one painted it. And obviously they couldn't take pictures back then, but uh, only a few years ago, divers found huge chunks of stone at the bottom of Alexandria's Harbor. And they think they're from Pharaoh's lighthouse. So unfortunately uh, they think a, a small earthquake may have just shaken it right and it came tumbling down. But a lot of the um, relics from uh, the 
city from Alexander's time is now underwater because of the sea level rise in the Mediterranean. Cleopatra's palace, Cleopatra was the last pharaoh of Egypt, is underwater. So you can go there, but you got to bring your scuba gear. Tech, why did Alexander stop conquering new lands? Who convinced him to stop? Why did Alexander choose that location for the city of Alexandria? Think geographically. And why was Pharaoh's lighthouse built? What was its purpose? Moving on to the death of Alexander. Alexander the Great became king when he was 20 years old. Most people haven't finished college by 20 years old. They had done nothing with my life by 20 years old other than college. At this young age, Alexander inherited the throne and all the responsibilities of a ruler. It took Alexander 11 years to spread his empire across the ancient world. What would Alexander have done next? We'll never know because Alexander died suddenly when he was only 32. He was planning on taking an expedition with his army and he began to feel weak. He decided to wait a day or two until he felt better. Go ahead and make all the preparations, he told his general. We'll go as soon as I feel better. But that day never came. Alexander got weaker and weaker. Finally, he was too weak to speak. His generals came to see him, but Alexander could only move his eyes. The next day he died. No one knows why Alexander died. Some think he was poisoned by one of his generals who wanted power. Fever. Others say he probably died of malaria, which is a fever caused by mosquitoes that carry certain types of germs. We'll never know for sure. Alexander's body after he died was put into a glass coffin and taken back to Alexandria in Egypt. They wanted him like somewhat mummified so that he would be preserved. The coffin was placed in a stone cart sarcophagus in Alexandria. Alexander's generals knew that no one could keep control of the large empire. Only Alexander could have ruled such a huge empire. So in the end, they divided it up. One of the generals, Lysimachus, took Macedonia and the northern part of Asia Minor. Another general named Ptolemy I took Egypt. So that'd be Cleopatra's line, right? Ptolemy was responsible for finishing the building of the city of Alexandria. He built a huge library in Alexandria and filled it with ancient scrolls and texts. And then a third general named Seleucus took over the southern part of Asia Minor and Alexander's lands to Asia, almost all the way into India. But we know Chandragupta is about to, to take his place there in India as well. The descendants of Seleucus were the Seleucids and eventually they were called the Syrians. That's what we call them today. They're still there. Alexander had brought a, a very brief time of peace to the ancient world. And we don't necessarily, we wouldn't appreciate an empire today like that, but in the ancient world, it was stable and people appreciated peace. Like he wasn't gonna have half his empire fight the other empire, right? Another half the empire. So ruling the ancient world for 11 years did bring peace to the ancient world for what it's worth. Um, so there was a brief time of peace in the ancient world and all its nations, but that peace ended with his death. Now Alexander's empire had become three separate kingdoms with three sec separate kings fighting for power. Alexander's three generals and their descendants would spend the next hundred years fighting over control of different parts of Alexander's kingdom, like borderlines and whatnot. This is our final quick check, name the three generals should be able to find their names speedy quick. How do people think Alexander died? There were two possibilities, so name both. And then how long was Alexander the Great King? All right, that's it for today. Stop there.